Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Robert Aducci, and I'm here with uh, Timothy Brown, our studio manager for Ulysses Spila, and we are um, we are live with uh, Ulysses Worlds, a news show all about Ulysses. Welcome, Tim. Hey, welcome to you too, Robert. Thanks for uh, having me again today. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's a nice, uh, balmy 106 in uh, Phoenix today. Yeah, Las Vegas. <laughs> nice and warm here too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, we're doing our Ulysses World Show. We are going to be doing this every Thursday uh, at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And, uh, you know, you can always tune in on, live or you can catch us uh, on YouTube afterwards. Um, today, you know, we're going to kind of talk about, uh, you know, what we've been doing for this past week. Re you know, we'll, we'll probably restate a few things last time in case you missed it. And, uh, and then we'll have a special guest later. Special uh, guest? Who could that be? Yeah, we shall see. Surprise. <laughs> uh, so uh, last week we talked about uh, one of our big topics was kind of stay at home and play. You know, a lot of us are home right now. And right. so uh, we wanted people to be able to stay at home and play our games. And one of those games is the Dark Eye. And we'd put the Dark Eye core book and, um, uh, and a couple of the solo adventures uh, up for pay what you want uh, and that is going to end uh, on Sunday I believe so if you have not grabbed those make sure you go to drive through RPG grab those you can go to ulysses-us.com and look for the stay and stay at home and play article and it has all the links for all that stuff great how many different uh, items are up there for pay what you want right now it's the three so it's the core book it's the um, uh, vampire of Havana and the conspiracy of mages but uh, right. next week, we uh, keep keep an eye out for a new stay at home and play announcement. We're going to have some more stuff for you guys to, to be able to stay at home and play. Terrific. So what's going on with uh, conventions right now? So we talked a little bit about la last time about Origins, and um, we found out that you can register for events right now. So if you want to run any of our games, please go ahead and register uh, to, uh, to, to run the games. And if you, you need any help with that, scheduling or anything, you need some help with that, you can give us uh, an email at contact at ulysses-spiele.com. That's U-L-I-S-S-E-S-S-P-I-E-L-E.com. -S 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 -E -E and that'll go to me and I'll sure. help you out. Now that's for Origins Online, which is going to be held, what, June 19th through 21st this right. year? Yeah, it was the okay. original the original dates of the uh, in person convention. Right, but the actual convention has been delayed off till October. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that'll be uh, October seventh through eleventh. Okay, great. Then tabletop events con of champions is May twenty third through twenty fifth, and I know we're offering PDFs for that as well. Yeah, so if you want to run games for those, well, first every um, every registrant gets uh, some PDFs from us, but also if you want to run games for us of our games, we'll give you other stuff. So if you run some games there, let us know that you're running them there and we'll, we'll hook you up. Great. So that'd be the same contact at ulyssesspiele.com address? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So that's two different possibilities if you want to run some games for us, which would be great. Mm -hmm. So uh, last week we talked about uh, for the Dark Eye that the Magic of Anchuria, of Anchuria physical products are in the warehouse and they're up for sale on our website. Um, and then you can get the PDFs on drive through So go ahead and check those out. Uh, as I said, you know, we're in the last week of the um, stay at home and play for the Dark Eye. So go grab those. Um, and something new that's just come up, which is really cool uh, that we are participating in, is called the Play It Forward campaign, which is uh, something drive through RPG is doing in partnership with, uh, with us and other companies. So everything for our community content, our community created content program for uh for the dark eye which is the scriptorium aventuris all of those products are going to be 100 percent royalty free on drive through rpg through may 17th so the creators get 100 percent of that content uh which is it's all 20 percent off so I, I guess they get 80 percent of that content because it's 20 percent off but, <laughs> but they get all of it no, you know drive through or gotcha. we are not taking uh getting a cut of that so uh so support that's your really great creators. for all of those creators so for sure i'm sure they're very glad to see a lot more people will see their stuff so that's uh through May 17th, is that right? Yeah, yeah, through May 17th. Okay, great. So definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, last week we talked about the uh, Book of Heroes, 
and uh, we've got some more details about that as well, right? Yeah, so you can go to Wild River, uh, Wild River Games, Wild River dot Games, and uh, you can click on the English version because the default is German. But you can click on the English version, yeah. and uh, they give some details, some gameplay, uh, which looks really cool. Um, you know, you can play. There's four different species from the Dark Eye that you can play. There's a bunch of quests and tasks. There's single player and co-op, which I think. Uh, I didn't realize that it was a co-op game until just recently. So it's a co-op okay. game. So check that out. Uh, there's a lot of character creation. Um, if you're familiar with the Dark Eye, there's a lot of like well-known places in you know from the universe that are there. Uh, and then if you're right. obviously if you're new, you you know it'd be all great new lore. And then uh, I mentioned the uh, the the comic pages last time, and I got a link where they they put them all. And right now there's currently ten pages of. Um, of, of comics that you can check out and again after this show uh, i'm going to put up a, uh, a web article that includes all of our show notes here so you can um, check those out where will people find that particular web article uh that'll be at ulysses-us.com okay great yeah we got a, a website right there for that comp for those 10 pages of comics so we want you to check those out mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, just in case you missed it last time, you know, we wanted to talk about how, you know, we the next crowdfunding for the Dark Eye is going to be the Gods of Aventuria. We don't have a date yet still, but uh, but that, you know, not necessarily mark it on your calendar, but some point, what is it, in the next, the last half, last half of the year? Well, work continues. The translation is largely done, and of course that has to be edited into more readable and publishable English, and that's a long process, but we... We take a lot of care with all of our translated products to make sure they're as good as they can be before we put them out. So, yeah, the next will be The Gods of Aventuria, and it's definitely in progress, so keep an eye out right here. But uh, with regard to The Dark Eye, though, also we already have our existing streams, and we talked about these last time, but just to reiterate, the uh, Vampire of Havana and Conspiracy of Mages playthroughs are available on YouTube. That's two different games. Uh, Vampire of Avena and Conspiracy of Mages. Those adventures playthroughs are available. Also, there's an extension for the Dark Eye on Fantasy Grounds. It's a walkthrough, and this is also available on YouTube. So the walkthrough for that extension. And finally, I want to mention that our, our character creation sessions made by Middenrealmer Mercenary Skirmisher from the Grab Bag live stream. And that's what is it? Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific character creation sessions so you want to check those out too yeah um moving on to fading suns uh eric you know last last week eric um put out a, an update that had all of the um all of the pdf manuscripts available for you to review so if you are a backer definitely go check this out L let us know if there's uh you know if you find any any typos or anything like that in there and we'll get those fixed before we get the final pdfs out for you that's the kind of thing we really appreciate from the fans. So if you can take a look, that'll just help us make the, the published product so much better. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Definitely. Uh, last week, we talked about Admiral Nelson, who is uh, one of our fans on Discord, and he put out a, um, a character sheet for Roll20 for Fading Suns. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of showed it to us, and then now it's out for real. So you can go, uh, you can go to the Roll20 wiki page if you search for Fading Suns 4th Edition... Uh, you should be able to pull it up, um, and then if you if you create a new campaign, you can also select Fading Suns Fourth Edition, and uh, that should show you the sheet. And so that's Great. just you know will let you kind of make a character. It doesn't have any of the kind of game information. It just sort of has the rules for um, for the character that the character would need. We'll we'll put those links up after the show as well, right? For sure, for sure. So also the uh, print friendly character sheet for Fading Suns is also available at the ulysses or ulysses-us.com slash download site. So we'll get that posted as well yep. with the print-friendly character sheet. Yeah. We've also got some streams already going on for Fading Suns, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, tonight is the finals of the Annals of Antioch stream. So join Game Master uh, John Matthew DeFoji and his crew at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time on Twitch, so that's the finals of Annals of Antioch. Uh, separate from that, Bill Bridges and Andrew Greenberg continue their heretical musings show on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, and it will continue every two weeks. So is that happening this coming Tuesday? 
So that happened that happened this last Tuesday. So Good you can go to YouTube and get that episode now, and then in two weeks, um, then another one will be up. Um, and you can also, if you you know, if you grabbed the PDFs and you want to kind of see how it works, I walked through them as well, and I created a Hazat Noble, uh, kind of like a psionic martial arts character. So right. you can go uh, check that out on YouTube as well. You, you've got it. You've got a type there. Robert. I do. I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the uh, uh, the Aventuria products that we put out for our Aventuria card game, we we want to keep those in mind. Of course, uh, we talked about this last week too. For the Aventuria Adventure card game, we have the full complement of Aventuria products at our store at Ulysses-US.com, and that's the core set and all of the available expansions in English so far. Also, there's a tabletop simulator mod for the game that uh, is getting more and more uh, use all the time. The The enormous link for that will be posted after the show as well. <laughs> yeah, that's on Steam. So if, if you want to, if you don't want to get the link, you can just go to your, you know, go to Steam and search for go tabletop Steam. simulator or Aventuria. You can get that. Also, in, uh, as far as streams are concerned for the Aventuria adventure card game, on Saturdays, we've been uploading videos of Eric Simon playing solo adventures. This week, he tackles Tears of Fire on Saturday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So be sure to check that out. Yeah. So uh, for Myth, Donna Heroes, um, just want to reiterate that uh, Grimson, one of our uh, fans and playtesters, he's made a really great tabletop simulator mod for that also for Classic Myth. So go check that out. Um, and then last time when we were talking about streams, I missed one, and uh, but afterwards I, I remembered, so I'm going to let you know about that. In case, uh, in case you're kind of new to Myth, um, you can go check out, there is a Myth Q&A up on our YouTube. We'll go ahead and, of course, put that in the show notes as well. Tremendous. All right, an old favorite, Torg Eternity. We've got a lot of things, of course, going on for Torg. Um, some of it we talked about last week. To reiterate, we know that all, all of the Isle products are now available for purchase at our website, and you can get the PDFs at drivethrough.com. Now, the Cyber Papacy files are in the hands of our German counterparts who are doing final layout touches before we release to the backers, but those are coming up very soon. Um, the next Torg Eternity crowdfunding is going to be Tharkold, and I know that uh, Greg... And all of the designers are well on their way to getting all of that done. The dates when we're actually going to run that particular crowdfunding are a little up in the air as we, we figure all figure out what's going on with uh, COVID and our ability to fulfill things. We're not in jeopardy, but we want, don't want to make any promises that we can't keep. So Tharkold will be announced as far as its date before too long, but right now we can't pin that down just yet. After that, later in the year, or early next year, we're going to roll out the Aurorsh Cosm for uh, Torg Eternity as well. Um, we've also branched out into fiction for Torg, and the first novel ever written in our new Torg universe is uh, The Maelstrom Bridge, written by Richard Baker. And uh, that's going to be part of the uh, Tharkold crowdfunding, so that everybody can get a hold of that particular novel. But also, we're looking at other ways to uh, publish that novel and other novels for Torg and our other lines, and we'll give you some news about that before long as well. And finally, updated form-fillable character sheet is available at, at ulysses-us.com in our download section. So that's a fillable character sheet mm -hmm. for Torg Eternity, and we'll post the link to that after this show. Yeah, so... Uh... You know, we've been having uh, a lot of people show up for the Torg streams. Uh, we kind of just started a new one recently. Uh, it's called The Four Horsemen. It's every Tuesday at 5.30 Pacific on Twitch, followed by, you know, the YouTube version. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, if, if you had seen some of the old Torg ones uh, but d didn't know where you wanted to jump in, now's a good time to jump in because uh, they just started with their Session Zero a couple weeks ago, and then they just put out Session one last week and so uh session or i guess that would be this week and session two is yeah, gonna be next week. week so um definitely go check those out um you know if you session zero they walk through character creation uh so if you wanted to know more about tour character creation that's a that's a good one to start out at uh i also did a walk through of the um the aisle pdfs 
last week and then not knowing what I was going to do next in the Ulysses grab bag show, I kind of did this Twitter poll between um, uh, all the different uh, kind of game lines that we do and people voted mm -hmm. just barely, just a smidge for Torg. And so <laughs> then once I had Torg, then I chose, you know, then I put another poll and I decided or I asked like, what do you want me to talk about? And so a lot of people wanted me to talk about the living land PDFs. And so I, um, I went through those as a noob, you know, kind of looking and, and learning about stuff. So, and the people in chat kind of, uh, you know, told me what they loved about, um, about the living land. And I was, uh, uh, happy to see that, um, you know, Ross Watson created, uh, you know, was the lead designer on that. And people, um, I heard from a couple people that they said that, you know, they would love to hear from Ross about, uh, living, living land. And I wasn't able to get him for that show. However, um, uh, I do. We do have him now. That's right. Our special guest today is Ross Watson. Da, 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 da. Welcome, Ross. Hello, Tim. Hello, Robert. It's good to talk to you guys again. So, uh, Ross, he's uh, he's a longtime game designer, lead designer on uh, the Torg Eternity Living Land. He's also working on Myth Tales of Legend for us and Wrath and Glory as a designer. Man's got a million credits. He's done a lot of great work for us here at Ulysses. Um, the the uh, Horseman stream for Torg Eternity, the Four Horsemen stream, I'm sorry, that we just talked about a few minutes ago. Ross is actually a player in that as well. Uh, Ross, That's do true. you want to? Well, well, we'll turn you loose to kind of talk about what you'd like, but I think that uh, a lot of people would love to know about uh, your design on the living land. Well, sure. I, I will get into all of that, I promise. Uh, a couple of quick things. Uh, the Four Horsemen stream has just started. It's really exciting. I'm playing a mystery man from the Nile Empire called Lady Salvo, uh, which is pretty interesting and fun. And, and uh, JM, or as he likes to call himself, JM the GM, who also runs the uh, the Annals of Antioch stream, uh, he's, he's got us on a really kind of unique... Uh, mission right now, which is kind of exciting for for fans of Torg, like a designer such as myself, to find myself in that game and have my eyebrows go way up, like whoa, this is cool. <laughs> like that's to me, that's like a really special like Torg game. So I just want to you know point that out to people. Uh, you know, uh, actually, Robert and I have worked together in the past on Wrath and Glory, for example. Uh, in, in case anybody doesn't know, Robert has an extremely well-trimmed beard. I am very, very jealous of this. <laughs> uh, the the man is ex, is ex, is just is just ex excellently groomed. Uh, but yeah, Ro Robert and I uh, we used to live in the same city, and we got together a, a few times at conventions and things like that. And uh, uh, Robert uh, did some playtesting for me, and then he actually did some writing for me uh, on Wrath of Glory. And then now he's, you know, actually part of the company and, uh, my, my colleague doing all this, uh, this, uh, social media and streaming stuff. So I'm, it's, it's kind of exciting inter and interesting to get to this point, uh, with, with you. Uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. So, uh, yeah, Torg Eternity is, um, one of three different worlds that I've been able to work on, uh, with Ulysses Spiele. Um, the first one, of course, was Wrath and Glory. The uh, second one is uh, Myth Tales of Legend. Um, but Torg is actually like chronologically, that's the first thing I got brought into to help design. Um, there, there's a long, long story about how Torg, just, Torg Eternity came about. Uh, but I'll, just just in really short terms, there's uh, it kind of all starts with Shane Hensley. And after after Shane, there's really only two people that have been with it the entire time since then. Uh, and uh, that's myself and um, uh, Deanna Gilbert. And Deanna, of course, still still very involved. I had to kind of back out to go do Wrath of Glory and various other things. But my heart is very much with Torg Eternity. I'm so proud of that game. It's just a really, really excellent, well-designed <laughs> RPG. Um, and, okay, so funny note, um, people were talking about the Living Land. Yeah. One of the very very first things that was actually written or, or even decided on about what Torg Eternity was going to be like um, was The Living Land. It was, um, I, I actually started writing that book before the core game was finished. Oh, wow. Because we needed to have an idea of what the Cosmos would be like and, and sort of the context for how, uh, you know, Core Earth was responding and, 
just, just a lot of things kind of gelled and came together. Like we were originally talking about how in Torg Eternity we wanted the Delphi Council to be a major player who was sort of guiding the player characters. And we wanted to have a same but different spin on all the Cosmos where it was kind of familiar, but at the same time had something new and exciting about it. So, yeah, Living Land was was uh, super fun to, to work on because it was that uh, kind of proto-matter, if you will, you know, mm-hmm. er, early, early alpha build <laughs> of, right. of Torg Eternity. Like, we didn't have any cards or anything when I was working on that at the time, for example. Um, and the dice system went through a couple of changes while I was working on it. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Ross, for anybody who doesn't know, what's the general character of the Living Land Cosm? Yeah, yeah, good question, Tim. Um so, you know, Torg is, is, a, is a game where you have a lot of different realities that invade Earth, and each reality sort of brings its own l- laws of nature with it. And the Living Land is a reality of primitive adventure. It is dinosaurs and jungles, and technology does not work, and there are uh, lost cities lurking behind... Uh, you know, j- just like tons of vines and, and towering trees. It's it's very pulpy in a lot of ways. Um, but the, the, the lens that I looked at it through was uh, an old 70s show called Land of the Lost, which I was a big fan of nice. as a kid. Right. And, and with that in mind, like we started kind of de- designing this idea that the living land was not just this big jungle where dinosaurs live. It was actually also a place where you could find pieces of other realities that had been preserved, like realities that were dead or conquered or destroyed. Uh, the goddess who is the, and she's a capital G goddess, she's a serious goddess, um, uh, who, who sort of is the heart and soul of the living land, she preserves these little pieces of lost civilizations, I call them lost worlds, uh, to kind of be an object lesson to her her people of what happens when they when they rely on dead things and technology and you know, sort of turn away from from faith because the, the living land is an incredibly spiritual place. It's it's full of spiritual energy. Um, the the it's called the faith um, axiom. It's extremely strong there. And even people who are are not particularly, uh, you don't have to necessarily be a priest to actually cause small miracles and things to happen there. That's just how 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 spiritually charged it is. Yeah, it was uh, like I said, it's. <laughs> I could go on and on about Living Land, but I, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed working on it. And it is a very unique place uh, in Torg Eternity with a very unique High Lord, Barak Ka, mm-hmm. who is the the High Lord there. He is, a, he, he, unlike the other High Lords, he likes to get involved personally <laughs> when problems p- crop up. So if you you uh, you start causing trouble in the Living Land, you might actually meet this guy face to face as he, you know, rides out at the head of his little dinosaur army and is like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> Nice. Yeah. When I was going through uh, uh, going through the PDF, I didn't even make it all the way through the PDF uh, in one show. I, I, you know, I just kind of started at the beginning. I was just reading. I would read like the section intros and just kind of talk about stuff and talk to the chat and stuff. And uh, I really love uh, I love the whole like living land idea uh, the you know, dinosaurs and the dinos. Uh, I love like you were, you just mentioned the uh, how anybody that has a little bit of faith can still perform some. Uh, those minor miracles uh, and stuff like that. I thought that was a cool uh, addition. I love the perks where you can get um, you can get uh, like dinosaur you know pets and stuff like that. I love things like that. So that was cool. Um, yeah, there's so many aspects of the Living Land that as I was reading it, I just I love I love the um, uh, the fate tokens. So if you have the specific or is that what they're called uh, the possibility tokens. Uh, if you have right. the specific living land possibility tokens, they do something different than the regular ones. I thought that was awesome. Well, and the Cosm cards and stuff. I mean, there's just all these little, little, little extra bits that make the living land really neat and interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, in JM's Jam has another uh, as a previous tour game that I believe he was streaming, mm-hmm. and and one of the characters had a pet Velociraptor they called MC Fang, which I think <laughs> is just great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, but yeah, uh, uh, Torque Eternity is, is is a just fantastic. I can't wait to see what is happening with uh, the Cyber Papacy, uh, which I haven't seen the, the files for that yet. Uh, and Isle, and yeah, it, and Arorsh is going to be just incredible when it comes up later. Um, what, one of the things that was decided early on, for example, that I loved about Torque Eternity is we decided that Arorsh was kind of 
uh, sticking its finger in everybody else's pie a little <laughs> bit. Mm-hmm. And so there's these uh, these things called the the uh, the what are they called the the nightmare trees? Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah, right. well, anyway, there's yeah, the, the little 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 splinters of of Aurors that are kind of placed in other realms, and there's one in uh, in the Yucatan in the Living Land. So you have these, you know, it's not just dinosaurs. Like even even the herbivore dinosaurs are, are meat eaters there, <laughs> and nice. there's yeah, and there's like this this Aztec temple with a, like a blood cult, and I mean, it's just it, it has this really cool little <laughs> horror spin on everything um, that makes it super fun, and you can actually bring that to other other places but just 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 adding that little drop of of horror to any other of the the settings is is really neat super fun that is cool. uh, but yeah a rush is going to be great so i can't wait on that um but let's let's talk about the the new hotness yeah yeah tell us what you've been working on ross <laughs> <laughs> so myth tales of legend um we jm who is the lead writer on this project and i'm myself i'm the lead designer we've been working hand in hand on this uh for a while and actually uh we talk about myth tales of legend every week on the ulysses channel um which are, which which is called the campfire chat um we sit down and we talk about uh so far we've got shows about character creation and the world um in fact coming up soon we're going to be talking about a really interesting part of the world where the uh the tavians come from who are this uh very uh noble race of i guess the best way to describe them is sort of mongoose people they are uh they're, they're from an island sort of off the coast of the main four kingdoms and they have sort of an interesting backstory uh we're going to discuss that and we're getting into we, we're doing a, a uh a section on character creation where i think this will be our third character creation one we're recording this week mm-hmm. But um, so, yeah, so what is Myth, Tales, Legend, right? That's the question. Uh, there is a world of myth, and that is where the, the Myth board game originally came from. Um, anybody who's a fan of the original Myth board game, you know that there is a setting, a world where all this stuff happens. Um, and we have decided to make that into a role-playing game. That's what Myth, Tales, Legend is. It's a role-playing game set in the world of myth. It is... Uh, a fantasy game that has a lot of narrative elements because the idea of myth, like just just even the, the word itself, is really talking about a story. You're telling a story about a thing, mm-hmm. and so so our game is called Tales of Legend because we're actually digging into that narrative element a little bit more. Um, this is not a story game; it's still a role playing game. It's still you know it's it's got a lot of crunch to it, but we have added bits that really encourage you to. to encourage the player to tell a little bit about his character story during the game, which I think are, are, is, is kind of interesting and unique. Mm-hmm. So it's based on the mechanics of wrath and glory. It's a D six dice pool system. We've, we've actually called this now the campfire system because there's a, there's some interesting little touches about how uh, you play the game in myth that revolves around the idea of your characters being around a campfire and telling the story of what they've done. And so, yeah, a lot of D six dice pool stuff. If you played wrath and glory, you're going to, you're going to be able to get into this right away. Um, JM and I are, are the primary two writers. Uh, we are working with some, some really exciting and interesting uh, artists on this project. And uh, w- w- I-, I will be able to tell more about it later on, but kind of right now, like in this, in the, in the broad sense, mm-hmm. that's, that's primarily the two people that are involved, myself and JM. And uh, we have we have a really I think that the most interesting thing that we're we're talking about now is that the first thing you're going to see for us is a quick start. And the quick start is is a really it's it's a really cool adventure. It's called the Lost Barrow, and it's a great introduction to not only how the system works but also the world of myth. And uh, that will be. You, you will be seeing that uh, later this year. I can't give you any more, uh, anything more solid than that at the sure, moment. Sure. We live in a world of COVID, and <laughs> yeah. COVID, COVID sometimes determines things. Uh, but yeah, th- this is uh, later this year. Is we're we're looking at at least uh, the quick start and maybe the uh, the Kickstarter for the whole thing. Uh, we can't say for sure on that. So for people. Well, Oh, go ahead, I was just going to say, in my case, I know we had a chance to uh, playtest some on the game system and some of the setting stuff when uh, we met here in uh, Las Vegas earlier this year, and uh, it was it was a ton of fun. Mm-hmm. And part of what I found very interesting about this, the whole setting of Myth and what's going to happen also with 
Miss Tales of Legend is is the uh, is is the actual um, how how low players start. That is to say, <laughs> starting characters in this particular game are are. Are the lowest zero or sub-zero level characters you can possibly imagine, and I, I don't know if you wanted to expand upon that, but uh, um, having a pot lid for a shield is definitely a possibility. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So anybody who's played the Myth board game knows that you do start out as utter novices at adventuring. Uh, you, you are you have basically uh, thrown down the rake on your home farm and said. That's it. I'm going to go be an adventurer. <laughs> uh, and you pick up your fireplace poker or you pick up a stick. I mean, and that's pretty much what you've got. Uh, so, yeah, the, the world of myth uh, le- lends itself well to the storytelling of an idea that that this is a bunch of young heroes on their their first major quest. OK, and the myth tells legend. You do start as those novice characters. And, and part of the story you're going to tell is you know where where you begin and, and how you end are going to be different not only in terms of your skills and your equipment but also like the things that your character learns over time and the relationships they build with each other and and with people outside of their little group or outside of what we like to call the campfire so yeah there you you are very novice characters indeed and uh, actually one of the one of the things that jam and I discussed was uh, <laughs> that that Early on, like especially with the quick start, like uh, the, the the main treasure or benefit of, of completing the quest is you get like an actual sword. <laughs> 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 like, oh wow, check it out, man! You know, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it's it's actually a lot of fun. It's not. Um, I mean, there's a lot of games that do start you out uh, at at a lower level than than a typical adventurer do, like a Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, but those have a very different feel. Than, than myth does. Uh, myth is a little more. I guess I would say its tone is a little closer to say like uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender or something along those lines. Uh, it's serious, but it has it has moments of levity and moments of of joy, mm-hmm. uh, and that's that's really what we're oh, actually moments of wonder too because we, we we like the idea that you as part of your story your character you know will find things he's never seen before. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's the answer I would give to Tim there. So well, what's a lot of fun. Uh, what what do you envision um, characters doing like for an adventure? You know, like we uh, in Fading Suns, you know, a lot of times the characters are kind of like part of, of a noble's retinue. In Tour right. of Eternity, characters are uh, kind of sent on missions by the Delphi Council. So, what uh, you know, what are they doing in um, in Tales of Legend? That's a great question. So a lot of what you do in Myth Tales of Legend is you are, it's aspirational. Like you want to become a hero or an adventurer. You know, you want to you prove that you're no longer just that farm boy or, uh, you know, ju- just, you know, so-and-so student at the, at the wizard tower. Um, so we have, we have a couple of ways to, to, to do this. One of our, uh, one of our particular methods is there's a, a quest giver called Tenebrae, who is this, uh, very mysterious character in the world of myth, and she comes along to sort of, uh, you know, sort of send you on little jobs for her. Um, that's all kind of part of this this idea that you're going to prove yourself, that you're going to kind of go through the crucible uh, and emerge on the other end as as a bona fide adventurer, a bona fide hero um, on his journey. But but there's a there's actually a really good reason for this. Uh, JM and I have have gone over a lot of the lore of myth in our campfire chats. And if you want to go watch some of those videos, we talk at length about why this is an important theme, uh, that that crucible, that proving of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, because in the in the past, in the world of myth, they've had they had sort of a King Arthur type figure who was betrayed, uh, and there's a very strong drive now from sort of the, the forces that want heroes in the world. To, to make sure that those heroes are, are capable and and not go, they're not going to buckle or break when the going gets tough, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't want to invest a lot of time and energy into somebody only to see them turn and run away from their very first encounter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so a lot of what like like, like Tenebrae's role is a lot of just sort of you know like let's let's see if you're let's see if you're up to this let's see if you're you're capable of this and then there's other characters and beings in the world that come along and have even greater tests and even greater judgments 
to be laid down. Again, I, I don't. There's there's a lot of lore that I'm sort of touching on here, but that's that's base, basically yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be doing you're gonna be going on adventures. You're gonna be fighting monsters. You're gonna be saving you know people in towns or or possibly even just sort of you know taking an interesting book from one location to another so that uh, a scholar can can study it. Uh, but there's always something more going on. There's always an opportunity for you to tell your story. And that's why that's where, where Myth Tales of Legend really comes into play. Cool. How do you think uh, Myth Tales of Legend and just the myth world in general, um, you know, we've been talking about, you know, fantasy and, uh, you know, how you, you've mentioned several things that are sort of like, uh, you know, that everybody might know from fantasy. But how is Myth Tales of Legend different from maybe your your kind of generic or classic fantasy? There, okay, so myth does have a very strong foundation in you know what we would consider classic fantasy. Uh, there are dragons, there are elves and, and dwarves and 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 monsters that are very you know we would recognize those those critters when they show up. Um, but that there are unique factors to the world of myth too that set it apart and kind of give it an interesting twist. Um, there's actually a race of intelligent, I, I don't want to say robots, but mechanical life called TikToks. Uh, that were actually part of this this last war, and if so, a lot of them have sort of been abandoned by the creator, and are now starting to uh, starting to kind of question like their their role in the in the world. Um, there is a, a level of technology, obviously, to create those things. Um, there are portals to other worlds that exist. Um, there are gods, and above the gods, there are these cosmic forces of the light and the darkness, both of which are intelligent forces that 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 make choices and impact the world. Um, there's there's quite a bit going on. I mean, it, it is it does at its heart it is kind of a, a fantasy that you that is familiar, and there's a reason for that. I think I think myth excels at sort of giving you all a a shared foundation of like, yeah, I know what this is, but then it, it adds its own little twist and flavor on top of that. Nice. Um... Also, also you can play you can play an almost like an ent. You can play what's called the spriggans. They're walking trees. Which are really cool. I think that's that's super fun. And we have uh, we're gonna we have our Tavians that we're gonna talk about on our, on our stream. So if if you want to hear more uh, about like what sets Myth the uh, Tales of Legend apart, please check out the campfire chats. Yeah. So Ross and GM JM have been uh, hosting this campfire chat, which is uh, every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific on YouTube, um, and they talk about all aspects of the game. And they alternate kind of one week they talk about rules, and next week they talk about uh, mechanics and, and and so on. So uh, you can learn, you know, over over the coming weeks and months until the uh, Kickstarter comes out. You'll you'll learn a lot about uh, a lot about the world of myth. Yeah, I think the one on the Bright Legion we did was actually really really great. But uh, yeah, coming up, uh, if I, I said it earlier, we're doing uh, more character creation, and we're going to talk about the the uh, the island of the Davians. Those are our two next things to discuss. So nice. Um. Tim, you have any more questions for Ross about uh, myth? Well, let's see. I mean, they're mostly deadline questions, so nobody wants to talk about this <laughs> here and now. This is not neither the time nor the place. But um, uh, you know, the the original uh, board game on which all this is uh, is based is, of course, a very imaginative place, and of course, that was a great foundation. But you're you're really taking all of those materials and expanding on them greatly at this point. So. Um, uh, I know that, uh, for instance, the World of Myth book, which had a lot of the background information in that, certainly that's a good foundational piece for people who want to learn about the world of myth itself. But uh, I know that the things you're creating go far beyond many of the concepts that are in there. Do you want to uh, talk about some of the things that you've personally expanded in the original game universe? Well, yeah, I mean, just first of all, the race of the Tavians, uh, they were just a, a piece of art. In the, in the board game, uh, we've given them a name. We gave them a culture. Uh, we are we touched um, very strongly on a lot of the historical elements. Like I mentioned, this sort of King Arthur type figure right. uh, called Hearn, and Hearn the Bright. His story was was really just a few snippets of lore that J M and I have woven together into this sort of epic that has in, informed and in, and influenced uh, things that are happening in a hundred years later. In the world of myth, it's it's a resonant story. It's it's like an it's like a myth <laughs> <laughs> that we we decided that that would be kind of our guiding star of what a myth is is the story of Hearn and how it has impacted the world. But also, 
uh, you know, we are looking at different types of monsters and, and expanding on them. There's a brand new uh, uh, species of, of, well, they could be enemies. They're called the Lucanine, and they're, they're werewolf-type creatures. And we did a show all about them and their culture recently, um, which we could expand on even more. But yeah, there's there's quite a bit that JM and I have have dug into. Uh, have, we've taken even just like a couple of sentences in that limited edition book and said, okay, let's let's turn this into a a, a feature of this setting and talk more about what this means. Um, so yeah, I, I, I that's one of the, my favorite things to do with uh, with myth is actually just find a piece in the map and say, okay, let's let's talk about what's here. Well, I know we want to give props to Brian and Keith and the other guys who were the original Absolutely. designers of, of all of this stuff, but I, I know we're taking that to a, a whole nother level to create something as intricate as a whole role-playing setting. So you've got to have a lot of detail in there, and I know you're doing a, a lot of fun things with it. It's, it's, you're just having a lot of fun. Yeah, I think people can tell. Yeah, well, wait till you see Keith's new artwork uh, for the characters and stuff. It looks fantastic. So. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. Nice. So is there? Uh, so you talked about the, um, the Tavians... Uh, you mentioned the Spriggans. Uh, you've mentioned elves and dwarves. What are some other kind of races that we we could maybe play, or you know, might just be sort of NPC type characters? You, you know, TikTok I have there. I have this show called the Campfire Chat, <laughs> uh, and we are going over character creation step by step. In fact, our first episode covers all the playable species. So uh, go there to find out the full amount. But um, in short. There are the Elves of the Dwarves, the Spriggans, uh, humans, and we have uh, the Hurani, who are sort of a rat people, um, and they have a very interesting culture as well of their, of their own. Let me just double check here. So Elves, Dwarves, Spriggans, Hurani, Tavians, yeah. Uh, those are those are the, the main races in the Myth, Tales, and Legend book. TikToks are something we want to talk about and get into. I think they would be a fantastic thing for an expansion later on. Nice. Um, but but the 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 big the big races of the world are those five. Uh, some they have their own names for for who they are. I think mm -hmm. the uh, the dwarves call themselves the Koptor, and the the elves have their own name as well. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, 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 that's. Those are those are the species, and we we talked all about their mechanics. We talked all about their their history and culture. So yeah, go check out the campfire chats, and we will you will learn more. Nice. So I uh, um, I've been posting. You know, uh, I posted your your campfire chats in in the myth group, and uh, in that group, there's a, a friend of mine actually, somebody I've known since high school, who's a big fan of all of our games. Um, he. He's like, uh, I want Ross to talk more about the about the Harani. He said the rack dudes. He didn't have a name for him. He said the the, the <laughs> rat dudes. And he's like, he, and dudes. then and then knowing that you were in that you, that you did work on Torg, he's like, I'd love to see uh, the Harani and Torg. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Torg is is one of those games where you start thinking about ways to connect it to everything. Uh, -huh. <laughs> totally. uh I I mean, I have I have a great way it could connect to the dark guy for one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, <laughs> we, we are talking about Ulysses. These are our worlds, your, your story. So who knows? Yeah, uh, right. I, I would have to hear from my boss. I would have to hear from Tim <laughs> that he's like, okay, I need you to make this happen. But uh, it's, it's, let's just say I'm not saying no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told him, I was like, Hey, that's, that sounds exactly what the, like what the uh, Infiniverse is for. Exactly. Yes. Oh my gosh! You can go right it up. Yeah, that would be a really cool. That would be a very cool Infiniverse product. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I think I think that that's gonna about wrap it up for us. Um, uh, do you know? You said the next uh, your next episode is gonna be about more character creation. Do you, do you have any specifics on that? Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about. I think we're gonna get into actually the campfire section. Um, of the of character creation because we 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 went through all of the the attributes and the skills and I believe we talked about the backgrounds. Um, so what's left is to get into. We did talk about talents as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, you did. So yeah, what's what's we need to uh, we need to, to go into the final section I believe, which is all about how you and your group. This is sort of a group thing, but you and your group are going to decide what kind of campfire you want your group to be about it's, it, it, it has a lot to do with your group identity it has to do with the the meta concept that you and your your friends are sitting around a campfire telling stories of your adventures it, there's a let me it, it, there's a lot to get into i, I can <laughs> i can just say you know check it out and i can explain it much more in depth there nice nice 
Well, cool. Um, so thanks for watching um, Ulysses Worlds, and thanks Thank Ross you. for uh, for coming and uh, chatting with us Ross. and telling telling you telling us what you've been up to, um, and uh, what you've done in with the living world, living land. Uh, I know a lot of people like that. Um, and uh, if you like the show, please uh, like like follow subscribe to our channels both on Twitch and YouTube, um, and turn on those notifications so you don't uh, miss us when we go on live. Uh, so for Ulysses Spiel, I'm Robert Aducci. This is Tim Brown and uh, and Ross Watson. Thanks, and we'll see you next uh, next Thursday at uh, 2 p.m. Pacific time. Bye bye. Good. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you.